Hello, and welcome to Pondo Dreams. Today, we're going to do a flip through. We're going through the complete middle school study guide, everything you need to ace in one big fat notebook. Let's get started. Okay, so this is the complete middle school study guide, everything you need to ace fill in the blank, this one's English language arts, in one big fat notebook. And it says it's the notes borrowed from the smartest kid in class and double checked by an award-winning teacher. And I'm going to be honest, these have been on my wish list for two years. I don't know why I haven't purchased them yet. They're really not even expensive. I think I paid between eight and $10 per book. And I've just really been waiting to get them for some reason, probably because my kids are just now hitting fourth and fifth grade, and now I officially have what is considered a middle school child um, in the public school system in our area. So I finally gave myself permission to get these. And I'll tell you what the catalyst was, and I mentioned it in another video, is the new science program that we're starting this year. Um, I put it together myself. I'm very, very excited about it. And part of it is I got this book for it and that just opened the floodgates let's just be honest when you get one of the series that you've been wanting for two years you kind of end up getting them all okay so um i'm just going to go ahead and start off with the one that started this entire thing and that is science everything you need to ace science in one big fat notebook and It's really, I love the style of these books. Um, so, oops, sorry, I skipped the intro. So it says, hi, and I think the, pretty much this is the layout for each one. It says, these are the notes for my science class. Oh, who am I? Well, some people said I was the smartest kid in class. I wrote everything you need a science from the experiments to the ecosystems and only the really important stuff in between, you know, the stuff that usually is on the test and then it tells you how the book is organized. It says, I tried to keep everything organized, so I almost always, I like having that caveat there, highlight vocabulary words in yellow. So let's take a look in here and find a vocabulary word. Here we go, vocabulary word in yellow, so seismic waves. And then he says, the color and definitions in green highlighter, but um, seismic waves, the energy waves released by earthquakes. So. That is going to be how it is throughout all of the books. Yeah, I use blue pen for important people, places, dates, and terms. Richter scale is written in blue, so that is an important term. And doodle a pretty sweet Charles Darwin and whatnot to visually show the big ideas. And there are lots of doodles. It really does, it is definitely done in a notebook style. And I really love the way that it is designed. And then it says, if you're not loving your textbook and you are not so great at taking notes in class, this notebook will help. It hits all of the major points, but if your teacher spends a whole class talking about something not covered, go ahead and write that down for yourself. Good point. And now that I've aced science, this notebook is yours. I'm done with it. So this notebook's purpose in life is to help you learn and remember just what you need to ace your science class. And um, that's just adapted out to each subject, but that is pretty much the intro in each one. And then you have your table of contents. So for science, we have unit one is scientific investigation, unit two, matter, chemical reactions and solutions, unit three will cover motion, forces and work, unit four is energy, Unit five, outer space, the universe and the solar system. Unit six is the earth, weather, atmosphere, and climate. Then we have unit seven, life classification and cells. Unit eight, plants and animals. Unit nine, the human body and body systems. Unit 10, history of life, heredity, evolution, and fossils. And then last, unit 11, ecology, habitats, interdependence, and resources. So let's just do a quick thumb through on this one because I want to get to all of the books so you can just see what we're looking at design-wise here. Lab safety and scientific tools, very good. It is very important to have safety rules. I actually do like that they include that. 
has a lot of tips on being safe when doing experiments. I think I am going to use that with my kids before we get started on our science this year. Bing! I already got an idea making this video. Okay, so that is a quick look at the science book. Really nice. And it looks like it has a pretty detailed index in the back too. Yeah. So that's great. All right, there's science. Let's move on to our next contestant will be math. Oh, let me get this a little bit more out of the way. Sorry. Okay, so math in one big fat notebook. Same intro. And it is the same, yellow, green, blue, and doodles. And so the contents are, for math, unit one, the number system. Unit two, ratios, proportions, and percents. Unit three, expressions and equations. Unit four is geometry. Unit five is statistics and probability. And unit six is the coordinate plane and functions. So, and this math says he's heard there was cheese somewhere in this book. So let me know if you see cheese. Sometimes I wonder if I'm going to get more of a enjoyment out of a book, but I think my kids will equally enjoy these. The presentation style will be very appealing. So there we go. That is a look at the math book. Did you ever see cheese? I hope the mouse found his cheese. Okay, well, maybe I'll find it when I go through with the kids. So anyway, that is the math book. Moving on, we have English Language Arts in One Big Fat Notebook. Bright, bold color for this one. And we have the same intro so that these can all stand alone if you only want one of these, if you have a particular subject that you're trying to get a little bit more information for yourself or your kids, and honestly, this would be fun to read together, or I think it's written at such a level, I think that this would be really enjoyable for the kids to read by themselves as well. So the contents for this are, unit one is grammar, unit two is language, unit three is reading fiction, unit four is reading nonfiction, and unit five is writing. So we'll just take a quick perusal. Verbs and mood. Oh. <laughs> they looked very perplexed in that picture. Avoid relationships. Sorry if you can hear my neighbor's dog howling in the background. I don't know if that's gonna pick up or not. If it didn't, then you probably are just wondering why I pointed it out. And oh, I do like this. We have reading lists. It, it does start at sixth grade. Every school system kind of, and with homeschool, it really honestly doesn't matter because you can just determine where you are with that. But um, we start off in public school and fifth grade is the beginning of what is considered um, middle school. So, but this book starts with a sixth grade reading list, which actually, some of this, this is already on our reading list for this year with our history program, which I will be making a video about soon. This is one of our books on there. And then on to writing. And I didn't notice, but I'm gonna guess that they actually have a reading list for fiction as well, maybe. That was a nonfiction reading list. Um, yeah, I do appreciate, I always like that. I always pick up the, um, at the library, they do have a fiction list. I always pick up at the library, the little bookmarks that have reading suggestions. Every time my kids, every year I get new ones um, since it has age recommendations. So here's the fiction reading list that they have. Holes, actually I just got that for the kids to read. 
Wonder, we have not read that yet. I've heard The Witch of Blackbird Pond is really good. Um, we have not read that either. So these are in sixth, seventh. We have read The Hobbit, however. We are Tolkien fans for sure. We read a lot of science fiction and fantasy books here. Okay, so that is the English book. American History in one big fat notebook. Same introduction. And so our contents are as follows. Unit one is prehistory. Unit two is colonial America. Unit three is the American Revolution and the early Republic. Unit four is American expansion. Unit five is civil war and reconstruction. Unit six is reshaping the nation. Unit seven, we have world wars and modern America. Unit eight, World War II. Unit nine, post-World War II era. And unit 10 is American history and current-ish events. And I did look, this was written in 2016, which for a history book is about as current as you're going to get without it just being current, um, without being current events. So these came out in 2016. So we'll just take a quick thumb through here. Um, we... New government. Yeah, this will definitely be a great reference for us to have. I am glad I finally got these. I think I may just have to sit down and read myself. Um, oh, and I forgot to mention, they do have check your knowledge on at the end of the chapters. There are some check your knowledge questions, and then the answers are on the back page. So no cheating, um, but I do like that they have this um, at the back. Um, and that's just something that you could just ask the questions out loud if you want to do that. If you would use this, you could probably use this as a bit of a spine um, if you wanted to. And you could just ask the questions out loud and have the answers. Or the kids could just read it and just see if they got it right, too. Um, you can work this into your schooling a lot of different ways. So I'm curious to see where this ended up. We have 9-11. And then it says bonus section, really recent history is listed right there. Climate change. And then check your answer or check your knowledge, sorry. Check your knowledge, check your answer. So there's American history. And the last one is world history in one big fat notebook. And let's see what we have here. Unit one is the first humans, prehistory to 3500 BC, BCE. Unit two, first civilizations. Unit three, the Middle Ages. Unit four, Renaissance and Reformation. Unit five, the age of exploration. Unit six is revolution and enlightenment. Unit seven, the era of imperialism. Unit eight is world conflicts in the early 20th century. And unit nine is post-World War II, the world from 1945 to today. And I believe that world history is also, yeah, 2016. So here we go. A little flip through here. And I actually, with what our history is coming up this year, we're doing the ancients, and I'll post a video on that curriculum, but there's going to be a fair amount of reference I can do in here because it's seen, we have Mesopotamia, ancient Africa, ancient Egypt, the Phoenicians and the Israelites, ancient India, all of these are in, yeah, a lot of ancient Greece, a lot of this is in the curriculum that we're going to be using. So I will be doing a video on that soon, but I imagine I will probably use this for some cross-reference. I have a lot of cross-reference. I have a lot of things to show you for that. So here we go. We have a lot of the We have a lot of ancient at the beginning, but we have made our way all the way up into the 2000s. 
So that is the everything you need to know everything you need to ace, pardon me, the American history, world history, English language arts, math, and science in one big fat notebook series. <laughs> Let me know what you think of this. Have you used this or is this something that you've been curious to read too? Let me know. Please like and subscribe. Thank you.